An uncharacteristic warning from one of the most respected nonpartisan journalists in the world, breaking from 50 years of journalistic tradition to come here and warn you about the threat he says Donald Trump poses still to the United States, threats to both democracy and to American national security. Bob Woodward became a household name back in the 70s, of course, when with his partner at the Washington Post, Carl Bernstein, Woodward broke the Watergate scandal wide open, an investigation that helped pave the path to House impeachment proceedings, the resignation of President Nixon, a best-selling book, and a celebrated film. Woodward, Bernstein, you're both on the story, now don't f*** it up. Since then, Woodward has become an authority on the presidency over the last few decades, publishing more than a dozen books with unvarnished looks at both Republicans and Democrats in the White House. His access to the Oval Office is basically unmatched. But there's an old saying in journalism, if your mother tells you she loves you, get a second source. And that's what Woodward does. He listens to presidents, he writes down what they tell him, and then he checks what they say with those in the room where it happened. And now Woodward is releasing audio audio from the more than eight hours of discussions he had with candidate and President Donald Trump. And while some of the content has been reported on before, Woodward wants you, the American people, to hear from Donald Trump directly, to see if you come to the same conclusions that he has. That quote, the record now shows that Trump has led and continues to lead a seditious conspiracy to overturn the 2020 election, which in effect is an effort to destroy democracy, unquote. Those are shocking words from Bob Woodward. An effort to destroy democracy? Seditious? Conspiracy? Why is Woodward saying this now? We will ask him here, live, in a moment. But first, we need to acknowledge it's not as though Trump stopped saying outrageous, dangerous things. He simply lost access to his more mainstream, unfiltered megaphones, whether Twitter or Facebook or, or a live feed from the White House lawn. Few media outlets continue to cover his every speech or every untethered post on his ironically named Truth Social Twitter knockoff. But in some ways, Trump's rhetoric, for those of us who have been following it, it has, dare I say, gotten worse. Case in point, what Donald Trump said at a rally over the weekend in Texas about how he would handle the journalists and the publisher of Politico who broke the story of the Supreme Court draft opinion overturning Roe v. Wade. This is how Donald Trump said he would force those journalists to give him the name of their source. You say, who is the leaker? National security. And they say, we're not going to tell you. They say, it's OK, you're going to jail. And when this person realizes that he is going to be the bride of another prisoner very shortly, he will say, I'd very much like to uh, tell you exactly who that leaker is. It was Bill Jones. I swear he's a leaker. And we got him. We got him. The rally crowd laughing along there at Donald Trump talking about threatening a reporter with prison rape. Lest you think this is just classic Trump spouting off, trying to make the crowd laugh. Donnie from Queens, you're on the air. Folks who know Donald Trump well are afraid. Here's former Trump White House Communications Director Alyssa Farrah Griffin, who worries that if Trump manages to become president again, his sequel will be all about retribution and changing America forever. You think that he will try to impose some form of autocracy? I think that he absolutely would. There were things he, he wanted to do when he was in power the first time that were well beyond the scope of what the U.S. president should be able to do, whether it's weaponizing the Justice Department against political opponents, whether it's, uh, you know, going after the free press. He would certainly be open using the military for political reasons as well. So keep that in mind from former Trump insiders, that concern when we listen to the Trump interviews with Bob Woodward. What did Trump say that caused a seasoned, straight down the middle journalist to break the glass in case of emergency? Let's start with the coronavirus pandemic, which has now killed more than one million people in the United States. The tapes seem to reveal a president who was caught completely underprepared and did very little in those first crucial months to course correct, even though two 
of Trump's top national security advisors told Woodward directly that they gave Donald Trump a clear and direct warning on January 28, 2020. So I then jump in, and at that point, I, I, think I, I think the exact phrase I used was, this will be the biggest national security threat you face in your presidency. I was pretty passionate about it. But I was literally saying to the president, uh, this I, will be the biggest I national him, yes. security threat you face yes, in your uh, presidency. Uh, uh, yes. A warning, January 28th, 2020. Here's how Trump responded in May when Woodward learned about that warning and asked Trump about it. Your new national security advisor, O'Brien, right. said to you on yeah. January 28th, Mr. President, this virus is going to be the biggest national security threat to your presidency. Do you remember that? No, no. You don't? No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm sure if he said it, you know, I'm sure he said it. Nice guy. Now, as I said, Woodward had not learned about the January 28th warning until May. May. More than 70,000 Americans had already died from the virus. Now, two months after that, in July, Trump gave Woodward a ring, and he said he finally had a plan to deal with the pandemic. But Trump wanted to wait to release it until a time when it would better help him win re-election. Bob, you'll see the plan over the next four weeks. This you is will see the plan, Bob. But I've got 106 days. That's right. a long time. You right. know, if I put out a plan now, people won't even remember it in 100. I won the last election. No, in no, but week. it's not just put out the plan. It's executed. No, I, it? I am executed. You'll okay. see it starting. But it was not just Trump's handling of the pandemic that led Woodward to declare him an unparalleled danger. Back in December 2019, Trump shared letters with Woodward that had been sent by North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. He wrote me beautiful letters, and they're great letters. We fell in love. We fell in love. Kim Jong-un is, of course, a murderous tyrant whose citizens are essentially prisoners in their own country. Trump did not actually seem to care much about that, though. To Woodward, Trump only cared about dictators in terms of their relationships with him. It's funny, the, the relationships I have, the tougher and meaner they are, the better I get along with them. You'll explain that to me someday, okay? But maybe it's not a bad thing. The easy ones are the ones I maybe don't like as much or don't get along with as much. That's another trait that alarmed Woodward, along with plenty of national security experts. Trump had a failure to understand the role that the president of the United States plays on the global stage. I mean, this is what Trump was saying about Putin in 2019. I respect Putin. I think Putin likes me. I think I like him. Both relationships, Trump and Putin and Trump and Kim Jong-un, continued to blossom throughout his presidency. Trump waxed not so poetic about Kim Jong-un with Woodward in December 2019. The word chemistry. You meet somebody and you have a good chemistry. You meet a woman. In one second, you know whether or not it's all going to happen. You meet a woman in one second, you know whether or not it's going to happen. That is especially true, by the way, per the Access Hollywood tape and a myriad of sexual assault allegations if consent is not really an issue. But beyond that, we're talking about the leader of the free world making foreign policy based on his perceptions of chemistry. Now, for Woodward, hearing is believing. That's why he's here tonight. So you can not just read about but listen to Donald Trump, who, for instance, seemed to have little interest in helping battle the biggest pandemic the world has seen since 1918. Perhaps the most telling part of the Trump tapes, however, is what Trump would not say. Woodward says that in all 20 interviews, there's only one time Donald Trump essentially said no comment. In summer 2020, around the time that the January 6th committee says Trump and his minions were beginning the plan to hold on to power illegally and violently and at all costs. Everyone says Trump is going to stay in the White House if it's contested. Have you? Well, I'm not, I, I don't want to even comment on that. Though. Sure. I don't want to comment on that at this time. Hey, Bob, I got all I these understand. people. I'll talk to you later on tonight. We know now why Trump would not answer that one question. His plans to desperately try to stay in power, to try to throw out millions of American votes, to try and subvert democracy. 
ending in the deadly and bloody insurrection. But that is just one of the data points, by no means the only one, leading Bob Woodward to play these tapes for you tonight, to break with his normally detached reporting and to sound the alarm. 